हेलो स्टूडेंट दिस इज ओम प्रकाश यादव इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर आई हैव टीच यू दैट व्हाट इज द लॉ ऑफ गियरिंग टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू टीच यू व्हाट इज द वेलोसिटी ऑफ स्लाइडिंग व्हाट इज वेलोसिटी ऑफ स्लाइडिंग अगेन आई एम गोइंग टू रेफर द सेम फिगर दिस फिगर ओके ऑलरेडी आई हैव एक्सप्लेन इन माई प्रीवियस लेक्चर दैट वॉट इज दिस फिगर so again i am explaining little bit but if you want to go in detail you see my previous lecture okay so again to prove the to get the velocity of sliding i am taking the two body this is the body 1 and this is the body 2 this body 1 is rotating about this center o1 with an angular velocity omega 1 this body 2 is rotating about center o2 with an angular velocity omega 2 this is the point of contact q now let us draw the common tangent at the point of contact and also common normal at the point of contact common this is the common tangent at the point of contact and this is the common normal at the point of contact common normal at the point of contact now let us draw normal from this o1 let us join this o1 and the q q is the point of contact let us join this o1 with the q and draw normal from o1 on this line so this is o1 m o1 m and this angle is 90 degree let us say this angle is alpha this angle is alpha this is the body 2 this is the body 2 let us join this o2 with the point of contact q and draw normal from this o2 on the common normal so this is m normal from this o2 on this line is o2 m so this is triangle q m o2 and this is triangle O one Q yeah okay intersection of this point this uh, common normal at the point of contact in the center line O one O two is this P this P is very important point already I have explained that this is a pitch point this is what the pitch point okay when <clears throat> we are let us see some angle first let us see that. Uh, when the we are considering this point q on the body 1 when point q is considered on the body 1 then its velocity will be perpendicular to o1 q that is this this is perpendicular to that so velocity of point q when this is considered on the body 1 is equal to its radius into angular velocity so radius is omega 1 q into omega 1 okay if you consider the point q on the body 2 then its velocity will be perpendicular to o2 q in this direction so this is what velocity of point q when consider on the body 2 so this will be radius into angular velocity so its radius will be o2 q into its angular velocity omega 2 so this is o2 q into omega 2 okay so while proving the law of gear i have taken component of velocity this and this along the common normal and i put i have put it this is equal to 0 because along the common normal at the point of contact cannot be relative velocity means that will be 0 okay acha one thing more means along the common normal at the point of contact velocity cannot be possible but along the common normal at the point of contact this two body can slide let us see here that this is the common tangent at the point of contact so this is our two body so they cannot move in the common normal direction but they can slide they can slide along the common tangent so this body can have the sliding motion along the common tangent along the common tangent so let us define what is the velocity of sliding so velocity of sliding is the relative velocity of body 1 with respect to body 2 along the common tangent at the point of contact so what is the velocity of sliding let us derive it so velocity of sliding is the velocity of one tooth relative to its mating tooth along the common tangent at the point of contact q okay so how to calculate the velocity of sliding to get the velocity of sliding let us find out component of this velocity along the common tangent then component of this velocity along the common tangent then just by the difference of these two you can get the velocity of sliding along the common tangent so let us see that what will be component of this uh, vq1 along the common tangent look at here 
along the common normal this angle is alpha so if the component of this along this common normal is bq1 cos alpha so along the common tangent this will be bq1 sin alpha similarly component of velocity bq2 along this common normal this is beta so that is what cos beta so along this will be sin beta okay so let us see that uh, so velocity of sliding bq is equal to bq1 sin alpha component of velocity along the common tangent of the by considering point q on the body one now bq2 sin beta by considering the point q on the body two and its component along the common tangent okay so difference of these two because both are in the same direction so difference of these two will be the relative velocity of body one with respect to body two along the common tangent so let us put the value of bq1 and bq2 already i have written in the figure so this is what omega 1 q into omega 1 sin alpha minus omega 2 q into omega 2 sin beta similarly as for the law of gear we have calculated cos alpha and cos beta similarly you can calculate this sin alpha and sin beta from the same triangle now let us come on look at in this triangle o1 qm o1 qm this angle is alpha so what will be sin alpha sin alpha is equal to what qm divided by o1 q look at here i have written the same thing sin alpha is equal to qm divided by o1 q now you come in this triangle o2 qn o2 qn this is beta so what will be sin beta this qn this qn divided by o2 q o2 q so same thing i have written here look at here sin beta is equal to qn divided by o2 q let us put the value of sin alpha and sin beta into this expression so what we are getting look at here so this o1 q1 o1 q1 get cancelled out here look at this o2 q and this o2 q is getting cancelled out so what we are getting velocity of sliding vs is equal to this uh, omega 1 qm minus omega 2 qn omega 2 qn okay now this qm can be written as qp plus pm let us see how from the figure where is qm so this is qm this is qm so this is qm so this is qp plus pm can you write or not so from here you can see that this qm can be written as qp plus pm so same thing i have written here look at here qp plus pm minus omega t and omega 2 and this qn can be written as let us see that where is qn so this is the qn and this qn can be written as this pn this pn minus pq this is qn so can be written as this pn minus pq so same thing i have written here pn minus pq let us expand this so i am getting this omega 1 qp plus omega 2 pm minus omega 1 pm minus omega 2 pn plus omega 2 pq look at here this is qp this is qp qp pq is the same thing that is a distance actually so we can take here this qp from this Q, qp or pq we can take the common so we are getting omega 1 plus omega 2 so omega 1 plus omega 2 into qp now you take this and the distance together so what we are getting that omega 1 pm minus omega 2 pm say this is some and give some equation number to this okay so velocity of sliding is equal to this now let us use the result of law of gearing so from the law of gearing we have already proved it you can see also here this is from the law of gearing that omega 1 by 2 is equal to what pn beta k pm same thing i have taken here from the law of gearing so let us multiply this in that way so what we are getting omega 1 pm is equal to omega 2 pn okay you take this omega 2 pn on that side so what we are getting that omega 1 pm minus omega 2 pn is equal to 0 look at here look at here same thing is here in this bracket so whatever you have got here same thing is here means what this term is tending to zero so this term is tending to zero means this term has gone so velocity of sliding bs is equal to omega 1 plus omega 2 into qp look at here so velocity of sliding becomes omega 1 plus omega 2 into qp so i have given name 1 and 2 1 and 2 already i have told that 
in law of gearing that body 1 and 2 are the gear 1 and gear 2 two of gear 1 and the two of gear 2 so velocity of sliding omega 1 plus omega 2 into qp also we can write this equation in that way if you say one of the gear as a gear then another will be pinion so if you tell that one is the pinion so this becomes angular velocity of pinion that is omega p then another will be omega 2 will be the gear so omega 2 is what omega g omega g is what angular velocity of the gear so this can be also written as velocity of sliding vs is equal to angular velocity of pinion plus angular velocity of gear into qp into qp this is the final expression but this is not just a mathematical formula that uh, you put anything and you, you get anything. So without understanding actually what is this QP, you will not be able to calculate the velocity of sliding. So this is little bit difficult to calculate. Okay. So without understanding, this is not possible to calculate it. So understanding is required. So already I have told that what is this point P? This point P is the pitch point in which is fixed, which is fixed. So this point P is fixed. They are not moving during the motion. Means from a start of engagement of the gear to the end of engagement of the gear, this point P is fixed. That point P is not changing. So another point here in the velocity of sliding is Q. What is the point Q? This is the point of contact. This is the point of contact and this point of contact will travel along the common normal at the point of contact. Always this point Q will be along this line, along this common normal at the point of contact line. So this Q will travel from the start of engagement to the end of engagement and in between the start of engagement and uh, end of engagement this point q and p will coincide in between this two not exactly at the middle but in between the start of engagement and the end of engagement this point q will coincide with the point p okay so this point of contact q is traveling is moving from start of the engagement to the end of engagement they are moving from start of the engagement to the end of engagement but along what but along the common normal at the point of contact and uh, at some extent, the point Q will coincide with the point P. At that situation, QP will be 0. At that situation, QP will be 0. So by calculating the value of QP, so already you can get the value of omega P, omega Z. Just you calculate the value of QP, you put it here, then easily you can calculate. Otherwise, this will be very difficult to get it. So what is this QP? P is the pitch point and the Q is the point of contact. So QP is the distance between the pitch point and the point of contact. So QP is the distance between pitch point and the point of contact. Point of contact. Achha. Okay. So if someone is saying that calculate the velocity of sliding at the start of engagement. Calculate the velocity of sliding at the start of engagement. Suppose engagement start from here and engagement end of here engagement start from here and end of here so this is the start of engagement so point q will be here point q will be here so by calculating this distance qp you put it the value of qp in the formula you will get the velocity of sliding at the start of engagement okay <coughs> now let us suppose that point q is at the end of engagement point q is at the end of engagement so when the point q will be at the engagement just by calculating the value of this is p there that will be q so just by calculating this p q from here you can get what is the velocity of sliding at the end of engagement at the end of engagement okay now again you come up here suppose when the point is when the point q is at the point of cont uh, sorry sorry when this point q is at the point p that is at the point pitch point then qp is equal to 0 when qp is equal to 0 velocity of sliding is equal to 0 velocity of sliding is equal to 0 so qp 0 to velocity of sliding 0 so what we are concluding that as the pitch point velocity of sliding is 0 so velocity of sliding is there in the gearing I am not telling that there is no velocity, there is no sleeping, sleeping is there, velocity of sliding is there. We are calculating it, but at the pitch point, 
but at the pitch point here at the pitch point velocity of sliding is zero that's why exact velocity ratio is transmitted in gear exact velocity ratio is transmitted in gear okay this is the final expression okay thank you very much